welcome to Abstract Boss. My name is Ashley and today is the first week of submissions for the Abstract Boss Award. So this week we are going to be working on dirty pours. If you're not sure what a dirty pour with resin is, I'm going to walk you through it. I will show you how I did a dirty pour with my turtle and then Friday I'll show you how I did the first half. I am using the Counterculture DIY Artist Resin and I am just going to start off by saying I do already have the first half done. I do my mosaic tiling first and I will show that video on how I did that on Friday. So stay tuned on Friday. But today we're just going to be focusing on how I did the dirty pour. The first thing you definitely want to do though is make sure all your taping is done. I have the taping around the whole edge as well as underneath my turtle and I also taped the middle where I don't want it to run over into because I don't want it to actually touch the mosaic tiling side. Once you get all the taping done then you can go ahead and start mixing up your resin. This is a equal part one-to-one -one ratio of resin and so I'm just going to pour them in the cups make sure they're at the same height and mix them together extremely simple all right now that the resins mixed I am going to make sure that I have enough cups for each of the pigments that I'm going to use I'm gonna use the aquamarine from Patty's pigments it's like a really pretty teal I'm gonna use the antique copper from Patty's pigments it's a beautiful brown, and then I'm going to use the Armor Art Epoxy Pigment, the white from Counterculture DIY, and also the copper from Pinata Inks. Now I picked the colors because I wanted to match the tiling as best as I could. I was looking at different glitters for this. I do have the same brown glitter, but I decided to pull in some of the teal glitter on this side just to kind of like that uh, pretty blue glitter just to pull in that color because I think there's going to be plenty of brown from the resin itself. In case you don't remember you're just doing a 110 ratio when it comes to mixing your pigments. So I have my powder pigments and then even the Arma Art and the alcohol ink, you just want to make sure that you don't go past the 10% of whatever you have with your resin. The powder pigments doesn't have a chemical reaction, so it's a little bit easier to do more. If you want to know more about that though, make sure you check out my video here and that explains it in a lot more detail. All right, now that all the pigments are mixed, I'm going to go ahead and take the popsicle sticks out and I'm going to begin my pouring. I do have a big cup that will be able to hold all three of these colors inside of it. You don't want to pour them into one of the other cups. It doesn't work as well that way. And so you want to start with a nice fresh clean cup and you're going to pour each of these colors repetitively as much as you can. I find that the more lines you can create in the cup, then the better the pour is going to be when you try to pour it out. So if you notice, I'm just going to allow it to drip down the side because it is a really large cup. So I'm just gonna allow that resin to pull down the side and it's gonna kind of create uh, just a bunch of ovals, kind of elongated circles uh, down the side there and pour down in, but it does stay fairly separated. And I'm just gonna keep doing this until I've put all the pigment inside the cup. All right, now that I've done it about uh, four times, I am almost all out of my resin. I saved just the tiniest bit in there just in case I need to add any additional lines and I'll tell you about that in just a sec. Now I'm trying to figure out how I want to start my pour. Typically I like to start away from my body and pull towards my body. I find it much easier but on this turtle it was a little difficult because I didn't want to start at the head and have most of my resin run off. So I just started on the biggest chunk went up to the head and then kept my lines going down towards my body. The closer to the bottom the colors get, they start to get a little bit muddied at that point. Then you wanna go ahead and redo another pour and that way you'll have some nice, fresh, bright colors down towards the body or 
if you're pulling away from yourself, then away from the body, but just wherever you ended the pour. Um, and so you'll notice that I'm gonna take the rest of the colors that I have now and pour them in the same way that I did the first time and just create those nice, beautiful colors. Cause I was right, a lot of brown did come out and I do wanna bring some of that brighter color aspect onto this side as well. Okay, now that I poured it out, I mean, honestly, you could leave it like that, but I wanna go ahead and create a little bit more lines. So that white just kind of popped out of the cup there because I wasn't able to layer as much as I did the first time. And right now I'm just trying to straighten it out and I'm gonna go ahead and add more color into that area. But you can see how the rest of it just looks so cool and is creating a really nice marbled looking effect, but with resin, I love it. Whenever I add my glitter lines, I honestly just follow the lines that my art created itself. So you're not really going against the grain, you're just going wherever it had already flowed. So that way the colors look like they are meant to be there, those glitter lines, even though it is glitter. <laughs> Um, it still looks like it's meant to be there on those lines because it has the same flow as everything else. I don't want to do glitter in the cup. Now this is a huge warning. If you put the glitter in the cup that you are pouring all these colors in, you are gonna have issues with that glitter going into every single one of your colors. That is why I wait to do the glitter until after I've already poured my solid colors out. Same thing with the alcohol ink. I wanna make sure that it's nice and bright and on top. So I do that at the very end. Alcohol ink on top of resin though is extremely iffy because it does push. And you can see in the final pictures that it does push, but I am super happy with it and I'm perfectly fine with that because I barely did any. But if you are to just go ahead and drip right onto your art piece, you're gonna have issues with having too much alcohol ink. If you notice with the alcohol ink, I went ahead and put it underneath the turtle on the resin and I'm just gonna use my popsicle stick instead of pouring this directly on top, I'm just going to use my popsicle stick to poke inside that alcohol ink and drag that through my art. This is the best way to get the limited amount of alcohol ink on the art, but still giving it a really pretty metallic shine. You can use a toothpick, would probably be actually even better. So that would give a lot less surface touching when it comes to the alcohol ink. After it cured, I went ahead and sanded both sides and I'm using a glitter adhesive that normally goes inside of ornaments for the outside edge here to finish up and bring some of the brown on the other side. And once I'm done with this glitter, I will do one more coat of resin and it'll be all finished. But make sure you sand before you do the glitter so that way you don't try to sand after the glitter is on there and then you happen to ruin your um, nice new lining of glitter that you did. 